Jai Shishi Guru Kauranga. Oh, here I come. Jai Shara Achara Jyoti 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 Akramatraj 
Let's talk word. Let's read the translation first. All glories, all glories to Sri Nityananda Prabhu. Did you give the microphone there? <clears throat> all glories, all glories to Sri Nityananda Prabhu. Can we turn this fan a little bit down? It's too high for me because yesterday was a cool day. And that fan also a little bit. Not too much. That's good. That's good. And that one too. A little bit down. All glories, all glories to Sri Nityananda Prabhu, the son of Rohini, to deliver the fallen souls. He extends his two arms. How does he do that? He goes like this. Yes, we like that pose of Nityananda. Ah, Dagamagalochana Guraye Nirantara Sonar Kamale Jino Firaye Brahmara. I think there's one verse about that. What? There's one verse about that. That's the Tara Zaba. Oh, I, I skipped the verse. Gada Gada Madhura Madhura Adho Bola Jar Deke Thare Prem Preme Dwari Deya Kola With a choked voice he stammers sweetly Whomever he sees he lovingly embraces Dagamaga Lochara Guraye Nirantara Sonar Kamale Jeno Firaye Brahmara Overflowing with praying, his eyes always roll about restlessly, looking like bumblebees hovering over a golden lotus. Dayar Thakur Nitai Para Dukkajani, Hari Namer Malaganti Dilo Jagajani, the merciful Lord Sri Nitai 
He knows the sufferings of others. He has strung together a garland of the holy names, which has, he has bestowed upon the people of this world. Papi ka shandi jato kori lo dalam, din hin jane koi lo premo vitaram. He has subdued the sinners and the atheists, but he has distributed prey to the poor and the lowly. Aha re go ranga boli pade bumi tale. Sharira bijilo nitair nayanera jali. Calling out, Alas, O Gauranga, he falls to the earth. Nitai's whole body becomes soaked with the tears from his eyes. Vrindavana das mani e vicharilo. Dharani upare kiva sumero kodilo. Within his heart, Vrindavan Das considers Sri Nityananda Prabhu to be like Mount Sumeru falling upon the earth. Jai Jai Nityananda Rohini Kumar Patita Udhar Lagi Duba Upasa. All glories, all glories to Sri Nityananda Prabhu, the son of Rohini, to deliver the fallen souls. He extends his two. Oh, 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 oh,
पतिताम भवने भी हो वैष्णवे भी नमो नमः नमो महाबद्धन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायते कृष्णाय कृष्ण जयतन्य नामे गौराचिशे नमः नित्यानंदम नमस्तुभ्यम् प्रेमानंद प्रदाये Kalo kalma shanashaya janava pataye namaha Panchatatvatmakam krishnam bhaktarupa swarupakam bhaktavataram bhaktakyam namami bhaktashaktikam E Krishna karana sindha dina bandha jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanshana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Prishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vrindai Tulsi Devai Priyai Keshavasya Chakra Bhakti Prade Devi Satyavachai Namo Namo Bhaktiya Vihina Aparada Bhaksha Kshiptashtra Kamadi Taranga Bhatye Kripa Maitvam Sharanam Prabhanda Vrinde Namaste Charanara Vinda Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityanam Shri Advaita Gadadha, Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Everyone, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. First of all, I'm offering my unlimited Dhamdavan Pranams and my Shraddha Pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Gurudev, Nitya Lila Pravishta, Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa, Asto Tarasata Sri Shila, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Maharaj Srila Prabhupada. And then I'm offering my same unlimited Dandavad pronouns in my Shraddha Pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Siksha Gurudevs, Nityalila Pravishta, Om Vishnu Bhad Paramahansa, Astutara Sata Sri Shiva, <coughs> Bhakti Rakshak Shridhar Goswami Maharaj, and Nityalila Pravishta, Om Vishnu Bhad Paramahansa, Astutara Sata Sri Shiva, Bhakti Vedanta, Narayana Goswami Maharaj. And I offer my Dandavat Pranams at the lotus feet of all of my Sri Sri Rupa Nuga Guru Varga and my Siksha Guru Varga. And I offer my Dandavat Pranams to all of the Vaishnavas and to all of the Vaishnavas. Chapter of Adi Lila, text 166. And this has, chapter has something like 170 something verses. So now we pass the midway point. So, of course, uh, we read the very famous verse. It's a verse to be memorized by any Gaudiya Vaishnava. The definition. Uh, of the calm, material lust, and the definition of praying, uh, the actual love for Krishna. And it told us, the verse told us that uh, Atmendriya Priti Vancha, Tari Bali Kam, that the desire to please one's own senses. Vancha means desire. Vancha. 
It's like we say, vansha kalpa to do yashcha. Vansha means desires. So, atmendriya priti vansha means the desire to please my own senses. Tare vali kam. That is known as lust. Krishnendriya priti itcha. Now the word itcha is used because itcha also is another word for desire. Krishnendriya priti itcha dare preem nam. So the desire to please Krishna's senses, Krishnendriya priti, uh, that is called preem. Dare preem nam. So, now we've come to the next verse. We read it, but we did not continue from there. Kamer tatparya nija sambhog kevala Krishna sukha tatparya matra prema to prabala So here is the word tatparya. Tatparya. Twice. So, what is the meaning of tatparya? Huh? Bengali master. Tatparya. Tatparya, it means the import or the inner meaning, the message behind something, the implication. Okay. Here it's translated as the intention, the intent. Tatparya. So, Kamer Tatparya. What is the object? What is the intention of lust? Nija Sambhog Kevala. Kevala means only. And nija means one's own. One's own what? Sambo. One's own enjoyment only. That's what kam means. That's what lust means. But Krishna Sukha Tatparya, Matra. Matra also means only. Prem to Prabhu. Yes, Krishna Sukha Tatparya. The intention of giving happiness to Krishna, only Krishna. Huh? But love caters to the enjoyment of Krishna. Right? And prem to prabal. And therefore it is prabala. What does prabal mean? Bala means spiritual strength. You know that? The word bala. You know? The name bala rama. It is based upon this word, bala. And bala means spiritual strength or power. Here it's translated as powerful, prabala. Very powerful. So, love that caters to the enjoyment of Lord Krishna, rain, it is very powerful. It is very full of prabala. Huh? Why? Because it's for Krishna. But the lust that caters to our own enjoyment is just so insignificant and negligible. So, lust has no position. That's all that's going on in the material world with the living entities is lust. And we just read in the purport the other day all the different, how do you say, uh, presentations of different moods, how they're all actually disguises for lust, ultimately, in the material world. Just like if a person is a humanitarian, right? What is a humanitarian? It's a person that wants to do welfare activities for human beings. So he's called a human humanitarian, right? But does he do those welfare activities for the cows? Or for animals? No. They kill billions and billions and billions of them annually. Yeah. So, he may be a humanitarian, but if he's killing animals and eating animal flesh, then he's bogus. 
he's not he, he's not a good person. He's not a pious individual. That intention is lust only. Gratify his own senses to be known as a humanitarian. I'm such a great, and then he gets this praise, and it satisfies his senses to be praised like that. So in the previous purport, we read so many different. I don't even know how many verses back that was. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Just so that we can put this into perspective. Acts of sense gratification may be performed under the cover of public welfare, nationalism, religion, altruism, ethical codes, biblical codes, health directives, fruitive action, bashfulness, tolerance, personal comfort, liberation from material bondage, progress, family affection, or fear of social ostracism or legal punishment. But all these categories are different subdivisions of one substance, which is called sense gratification. This is definitely, although Prabhupada hasn't mentioned it here, but I'm sure that he's looking at the purport of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur because this is what his purports are like. Most of the time Prabhupada is commenting upon the purport of uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur or Bhakti Vinod Thakur. But he's not always mentioning that Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur says such and such. So, now, Having read these two verses, defining uh, lust and love. Yes, actually, oh, guess what? The next verse, actually the next two verses, three verses, 167 through 169, are mentioning so many of these. So maybe it wasn't Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati. Here we go. Loka Dharma, Veda Dharma, Deha Dharma, Karma, Lajja Dairya, Deha Sukha, Atma Sukha Marma, Dustyajya Aryapata, Nija Parijan, Svajane Karaye Jada, Tadana Bartsam, Sarvatya Kori Kore, Krishna Rabajan, Krishna Sukha Hetu Kore, Prema Sevan. So now, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami is very clearly delineating what comes under the disguise. So social customs, scriptural injunctions, bodily demands, fruitive actions, shyness, patience, bodily pleasures, self-gratification and the path of Varnashram Dharma which is difficult to give up. The gopis have forsaken all of these along with their families even and they've suffered their relatives punishment and scolding all for the sake of serving Lord Krishna. They render loving service to him for the sake of his enjoyment. See, this is the main thing. They are serving Krishna for his enjoyment. And therefore, it's called Prem Seva. So, Ihake Kohie Krishna Drida Anurag Svacha Dauta Vastre Jaiche Nahi Kono Dag. That is called firm attachment. Firm attachment. Dridha Anurag. Firm attachment to Lord Krishna. It is spotlessly pure, like a clean cloth that has no stain. So in the purport, 
short purport, Prabhupada is saying that the author of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita advises everyone to give up all engagements of sense gratification and, like the gopis, dovetail oneself entirely with the will of the Supreme Lord. So now, the word dovetail is used again. We talked about it one day, the meaning of dovetail. But in this connection, and in this context, here it means fully, fully, entirely dovetailing oneself with the will of the Supreme Lord. Generally, we see that dovetailing is given to beginning level persons. That they have so many material desires in this world. So, okay, but dovetail that desire and connect it with Krishna and serve Krishna. But here, the word dovetail is being used in fully, fully giving one's entire self to Krishna. So therefore it is called dovetailing oneself entirely with the will of the Supreme Lord. Now that just happens to be the ultimate instruction of Krishna. Where did Krishna give this instruction? Where? Where did Krishna give this ultimate instruction? You have to first guess what the ultimate instruction is. But we already have a clue from the previous sentence. Krishna tells in the Bhagavad Gita the ultimate instruction to dovetail oneself entirely with the will of the Supreme Lord. Sarvadharman Parityajya to do that, you can't simultaneously be holding on to your lower level dharmas, can you? Can you, mam ekam sharanam braja? Can you do that if you are holding on to your own conceptions of dharma? Hell no. Not possible. That's why Krishna says, sarva dharma pritya. That means entirely dovetailing oneself with the will of the Supreme Lord. Because he ordered that to Arjuna. And guess what? When he's speaking to Arjuna, he's not just speaking to Arjuna only. Who is he speaking to? I'm asking all of you, who is Krishna speaking to? When he's speaking to Arjuna 5,000 years ago on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, who is he speaking to? every jiva. Of course, the jiva will have to come to the human body to be able to hear, understand, and try to follow those instructions. But it's for every jiva. That's why it's eternal. The Bhagavad Gita is eternal. Yeah. The Bhagavad Gita is not some temporary teaching. No, no, it's eternal. So here, now Srila Prabhupada gives us a very helpful hint how to do this. We should be prepared to do anything and everything. We should be prepared to do anything and everything to please the Lord. To please the Lord. Even at the risk of violating the Vedic principles or the ethical laws, which the Gopis did. That is the standard of love of God. That's the standard. If you don't come to that standard, you ain't got love of God. It's full. Now, that's the standard of love of God. Now, such activities in pure love of Godhead are as spotless as white linen that has been completely washed. Spotless. Huh? What? It's working. 
Oh, it's okay now. No. Oh, okay. Then you can. So, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur warns us in this connection that we should not mistakenly think that the idea of giving up everything it implies the renunciation of duties necessary in relation to the body and mind. Understand this point? Huh? Understand this point? Bhaktivinoda Thakur is saying, he's warning us in this connection, uh, we should not make the mistake of thinking, oh, now I have to give up everything. And then it also implies the renunciation of duties that are necessary in relation to the body and mind. Can you give up eating? Can you give up sleeping entirely? No. Can you give up your bodily maintenance that you have to perform on a regular basis? No. But then how to do that? Even such duties are not sense gratification if what? Those same duties, they're not considered to be sense gratification if they are undertaken in a spirit of service to Krishna. See, that's the trick. That's the art. The art of work. That we do it for the sake, for the spirit of service to Krishna. So now, Kaviraj Goswami says, Ataeva kam preme bahut antara kam andatama prem nirmala bhaska. So, therefore, lust and love are quite different. Bahut antara. There's so much here, it means there's a big space between. It's like we say in English, there was a gulf of difference. So here the use of the word bahut antara means there's a big space between kam and prem. Ataeva kam preme bahut antara. Big space between. Kam andatama. What is kam? Dense darkness. But prem? Nirmal Bhaskara. Nirmal Bhaskara means what? Like the bright sun. Bhaskara actually means the sun. Nirmal, bright, pure sun. Yes. So, now he concludes. Avraj Goswami. Ataeva. Gopi Ganer Nahi Kam Ganga. Krishna Sukalagi Matra, Krishna Sei Sambandha. Ataeva Gopi Ganer Nahi Kam Ganer. Thus, thus, there is not the slightest taint of lust in the Gopi's love. Not the slightest. In everybody else's, there is some, some mixture. Their relationship with Krishna is only for the sake of his enjoyment, not their own. And this is a very difficult thing to understand when we're studying this topic. Because we have a hard time uh, thinking that if happiness is coming to someone by doing something, then they're doing it for their own enjoyment. But no, the gopis never think about that. They think how Krishna will enjoy. But automatically they enjoy. But they're not thinking about that. Huh? In fact, sometimes they curse the ecstasies that come in their body because it prohibits them from doing some seva. So, thus there is not the slightest taint of love in the gopis, lust in the gopis' love. Their relationship with Krishna is only for the sake of his enjoyment. So now he quotes the verse spoken by the gopis from Srimad Bhagavatam 10, 31, 19. 
What is the 31st chapter of the 10th canto? It's called Gopi Geet. Yes. So this was spoken by the gopis when Krishna left them in the midst of the Ras Lila. Yes. <coughs> Yate sujata charanam guru hamstaneshu Bita shanai priya dadima hi karka keshu Karka sheshu Te nata vim atasi yatad vyatate na kim svit Kurpadi vir brahmati dir bavad ayushamna Everyone repeat, Yate, Sujata, Charanam, Buruham, Staneshu, Bita, Shanai, Priya, Dadimahi, Karkasheshu, Tenatavim, Tenatavim, Atasi, Tad Vyatate Nakim Svit Kurpadi Bir Brahmati Dir Bhavad Ayushana Gopis telling to Krishna in their songs that they're singing on the bank of the Yamuna. They're saying, O oh, dearly beloved. Your lotus feet are so soft that we place them gently on our breasts, fearing that your feet will be hurt. Our life rests only in you. Our minds, therefore, are filled with anxiety that your tender feet might be wounded by pebbles as you roam about on the forest path. So are the gopis thinking of their own happiness? No. They're worried about Krishna stepping on and feeling some pain from one of the pebbles in the pathway as he's hurting the cows. They're very, very much afflicted by worry for Krishna. This is pain. Gopi pain. So, Atma Sukha Duke Gopir Nahika Vichar Krishna Sukha Hetu Cheshta Mano Vyavaha. The gopis do not care for their own pleasures or their own pains. They don't care. They don't care if they're undergoing some pain. They don't care if they're undergoing and they're experiencing some pleasure. Uh, all their physical and their mental activities, they are directed towards offering enjoyment to Lord Krishna. Krishna Sukha Hetu, Sheshta, Mano Vyavahar. Uh, Mano Vyavahar. All of their intentions, all of their physical and their mental activities, are directed towards offering enjoyment to Lord Krishna. That's called Krishna Sukha Hetu, Cheshta. Cheshta means activities. So all of their physical and all of their mental activities are directed toward offering enjoyment to Lord Krishna. Krishna Lagi, Ar Sab, Kore Parityar, Krishna Sukha. Hetu Kore Shuddha Anurag. They, the gopis, they renounce everything for Krishna. They give up everything. There's not a single thing they didn't give up. They give up everything for Krishna. Krishna Lagi are so Kore Paritya. They give up everything. Krishna Sukha Hetu Kare Shuddha Anurag. So they have pure attachment. Huh? What kind of pure attachment? It's called Shuddha Anurag. 
And the Shudha, Shudha Anurag, what are they attached to? They're attached, attached to Krishna Sukha Hetu Pari. They're attached to giving Krishna pleasure and happiness. So, now he quotes another text from the next chapter, the Rasvila chapter, chapter 32, that was spoken by Krishna when he returned to the arena of the Rasa, Rasvila. So, here Krishna says, evam mad artho jita loka veda svanam hi vo maya nu vritaye vala maya parosham bhajata tirohitam ma shuyatum marhata tat priyam priya So if we can remember, why was Krishna speaking to the gopis? Huh? Why was Krishna speaking to the gopis when he returned to them very bashfully? He was feeling very bashful with his pitambara here. This is a sign of feeling humbled. I've done something wrong. So, yes. So Krishna was questioned by them. Yes. What kind of lover are you? Right? Krishna was questioned by the gopis. What kind of lover are you? And then they suggested there's some people that love in this way, there's some people that love in that way. What kind of lover are you? So that whole discussion, now Krishna answered to them, but he also glorified them. Yes. He glorified them. He said, O oh my beloved gopis, you have renounced social customs. You have renounced scriptural injunctions. And your relatives you have renounced also for my sake. You've done that for my sake. I disappeared behind you only to increase your concentration upon me. That's why. Yeah. I've disappeared behind you only to increase your concentration upon me. And since I disappeared for your benefit, you should not be displeased with me. So Krishna's trying to reason with the gopis. Yes. It's true, I disappeared, I gave you so much heartache, but why did I do this? I did this ultimately to increase your concentration on me. And that means I did this for your benefit, for your benefit, not for mine. So, because I did this for your benefit, oh Gobis, don't be displeased with me. I'm just Krishna. This is what I do. Don't be displeased with me. So, Lord Krishna, he has a promise from previous. He gave this promise. Purve, like that. Previously, Krishna promised. Where did he do this promise? When he spoke about the monkey even in another millennium. Yeah. Because, uh, because Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami is referring to this Bhagavad Gita verse. So what did Krishna promise in this verse? He said, he promised from before, he promised to reciprocate with his devotees according to the way that they worship him. What's that verse? Ye yata maam prabhantyamate tam stataiva prajam yam mama vartvam vartante manushya harta sarvasha. So Krishna is here saying something completely universal, completely universal, that it is his promise. And if Krishna makes this promise, he's not going to break his promise. 
So he has promised to to all the jivas forever and ever. That what? Ye yatama prabandhi. That means how that devotee of mine, how he is doing prapadya, how is he surrendering to me? Ye yatamam prapadyam. So, tams tataiva. Tams tataiva means just as they are surrendering to me, bhajami aham, I also reward them. I also reciprocate with them according to how they surrender to me. And then he said, everyone follows my path in all respects, O son of Vita. So what is this leading up to? What's this, what's Krishnadas Kavaraj Goswami leading up to? He's leading up to the fact that Krishna could not keep his promise. Despite the fact that he has promised it for all time. But that's the beauty of this. That even Krishna, who promises this forever and ever and ever, for all time, even the gopis can defeat him. And he admits defeat. You've defeated me. Your, your worship of me, I cannot actually reciprocate accordingly, like I have already told. As they surrender to me, I reward them uh, accordingly to that. But Krishna has now been defeated. Yes, defeated. So, here, now, there's a small purport. He says, Krishna was never ungrateful to the gopis. Never ungrateful to them. Because they asked that. It was one of the questions. Are you that type of lover that is akritagya? You're not grateful? You don't like to reciprocate? So, the fact is that Krishna was never ungrateful to the gopis. For, as he declares to Arjuna in this verse from the Bhagavad Gita, he reciprocates with his devotees in proportion to the transcendental loving service they render unto him. And everyone follows the path that leads towards him. But there are different degrees of progress on that path. And the Lord is realized in proportion to one's advancement. The path is one, but the progress in approaching the ultimate goal is different. So there's different progress along the same path. And therefore, the proportion of realization of this goal, namely the absolute personality of Godhead, it is also different according to their surrender. They will have a different realization of the absolute personality of God. Now the gopis, the gopis attained the highest goal. And Lord Chaitanya affirmed that there is no method of worshipping God higher than that followed by the gopis. Did Mahaprabhu affirm that? Yes, there is one shloka, uh, one shloka, which is telling Actually, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur Shloka. How does that start? Aradyo. Yes. Aradyo Bhagavan Rajesh Tanayas Taddam Vrindavanam Ramya Kachidupasana Vrajavadu Vargena Yakalpita. So here, uh, this is being summarized. Sri Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur is summarizing five different uh, truths that Mahaprabhu has put forward. And, and he says, Tatradro Napara. We have no other, we see no other uh, we 
we see no uh, no other explanation. Only Mahaprabhu's explanation. It cannot be overlooked. Srimad Bhagavatam Pramanam Amalam Prema Pumarta Mahan Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Matamidam Tatradaro Naparaha. Matamidam means we do not recognize any other opinion. Matamidam Tatradaro Naparaha. There is no other opinion than this. And what is he saying about the gopis? Ramya Kachit Upasana. Vrajavadu Vargena Yakalita. The pathway, the Varga, that the gopis traverse uh, in worshipping the Aradya Dev, Krishna, who is the supreme worshipable object. Aradhyu Bhagavan, Vrajeshatanayas. So the gopis. Uh, gopis attain the highest goal. And Lord Chaitanya affirmed that there is no method of worshipping God higher than that followed by the Gopis. So, Se Pratigya Banga. Pratigya means promise. Banga, Hoilo, means it was broken. Gopir uh, Bajani by the worship of the gopis. It was, that promise was broken. Tahate Praman Krishna Sri Mukha Vachani. And uh, this is proven by the fact that Lord Krishna himself, he is uttering these words from his mouth. What words? The next verse. Naparayeham Niravadya Samyujam Svasadu Krityam Vibhutayusha Iva Ya Mabhajan Dur Jaya Deha Shrinkara Samvrishya Tadva Pratyatu Sadhuna So this is the all time, one of the most excellent verses in all of our revealed scriptures that Krishna himself is telling to the Gopis. This, this verse is just as good as any of the other topmost Rasik shlokas because Krishna himself is admitting to the Gopis, I have been defeated by you. He says, O Gopis, I am not able to repay my debt for you, for your spotless service. Even within a lifetime of Brahma. A lifetime of Brahma? Do you know how long that is? Did you ever figure it out? I do. You have to have a scientific calculator for that. A lifetime of Brahma. A hundred years of Brahma. Uh, each year has 12 months. Each month has 30 days. Each day is 8.6 something billion years. So when you add all that together, you multiply all that, you come up with the lifespan of Lord Brahma. And if I remember correctly... Pronounce, pronounce it. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Um, Go ahead. Read it. 15.552 times 10 to the 12? It's 311 trillion years plus. That's what this is telling? No, I don't think that. That's what I've read. Yeah, yeah, we've read that, but I've also calculated it. It is 311 trillion years. It is 311 trillion years. Now, nowadays we hear this word trillion because of our foolish so-called leaders that are just trying to fill their own pockets. And they're filling their pockets with trillions as everybody else becomes poverty-stricken and not even able to feed themselves. But these bogus demon rakshasas are doing that. right? So they like the word trillions because more for me less for everybody else. 
right? That's because that's why because they're demons. Yes. So trillion is a big number. There's even bigger numbers. Do you know what comes after a trillion? Quadrillion. These are all scientific because scientists like to use very big numbers. Right? That everything is practically speaking infinite, but we're going to calculate it anyway. Uh, you know, the length and breadth of the universe. So many trillions and quadrillions of miles, huh? like this. Very puffed up they are. But Krishna himself is admitting, okay, what is a trillion? A trillion is 1,000 what? Billion. 1,000 billion. Even the word billion is a little bit difficult for us to comprehend. Okay? Oh, he's a billionaire. But how many millions do you have to have to be to have a billion? You have to have a thousand million. Now that's kind of doable in today's economy and so forth. That a person can accumulate a thousand million and then he becomes a billionaire now. Right? And then there's multi-billionaires, right? But when the multi-billionaire comes to the point where he has 1,000 billion, then he's a trillionaire. And there are trillionaires. And they're the, the biggest demons on the planet. Because yes. they've exploited everything so that they can possess all of this. But are they really possessing it? <laughs> it's a big illusion. Because guess what? It will be ripped away from you. Ripped away. When your body is ripped away and your subtle body is pulled out of your gross body by the ropes, the subtle ropes of the Yamadutas and they rip you out of your body and then they drag you. According to the fifth canto, they drag you for hundreds of thousands, I don't know, maybe even millions of miles. You're being drugged by them in your subtle body. Ain't nothing pleasant. And according to your activities, you will be meted out with so many wonderful, wonderful punishments. They're so adbuta that you cannot even imagine. Yes. They are not conceivable by us. But they exist. They exist. And if that poor jiva who wanted to become a demon, uh, if he's not punished by the Yamaraj, then he'll continue to be a demon. So this is actually mercy. Do you know that? It's actually mercy. The punishment of the demons is mercy. So Yamaraj has a very merciful job to perform. Yes. So now Krishna is telling to the gopis that, oh gopis, even if I have a lifetime of Brahma, I'll not be able to repay my debt for your spotless service. And your connection with me, O Gobis, is beyond reproach. It's beyond reproach. So you have worshipped me, O Gobi. You have worshipped me, cutting all, cutting off all domestic ties, which are difficult to break. Are they difficult to break? Domestic times? Did we not hear the advice of Prahlad Maharaj in this regard? We did. We heard the advice of Prahlad Maharaj when he was praying. But no, when he was instructing his classmates. And he was talking about how difficult it is to give up the attachment to family, wife, children, relatives, all of this. Why? Because it's all based upon one's body. And one can never give up his attachment to his own bodily sense gratification 
unless and until he transfers that attachment to Krishna. So, Krishna is admitting here that gopis, you have worshipped me cutting off all domestic ties which are very difficult to break. Not easy. So therefore, what is Krishna asking the gopis for? No. What is Krishna asking the gopis for? Hmm? What is Krishna asking the gopis for? No. He's not asking for forgiveness. In one sense he is. But that's not in the actual verse here. He says, Svasadu Krityam. Svasadu Krityam. I cannot give proper compensation. I'm not able to. So therefore, he says, Samvrishya Tadva Pratyatu Sadhuna. Pratyatu Sadhuna means let your your sadhana, let your sadhutva, let your pious activities be your compensation because I'm not able to compensate you. Yes? So this verse was spoken by Sri Krishna himself. When he returned to the gopis upon hearing their songs of salvation. Now, whatever affection we see that the gopis show for their own bodies, do we see that the gopis are showing affection for their own bodies? How are they showing affection for their own bodies? We will hear about that. Tabe J Dekie Gopir Nija Deha Prita Sevoto Krishna Lagi Raniha Nishchita. He says, Now, whatever affection that we see that the gopis show for their own bodies, we should know it for certain. That is only for the sake of Lord Krishna. You should know that the affection that they apparently are showing for their own bodies, it is not uh, real. Uh, it is not for them. No, it's actually for Krishna. How is that possible? Here the purport problem is explaining. The selfless love of Godhead exhibited by the gopis cannot have any parallel. No. There's no parallel, there's no comparison. We should not therefore misunderstand the carefulness of the gopis in their personal decoration. Do the gopis decorate themselves for Krishna? Yes, they do. How do they decorate themselves? They put on beautiful clothing, beautiful dresses, the highest quality, beautiful, beautiful, colors, everything, and they also decorate their bodies with so much jewelry. And their beautiful eyes and faces, they decorate with kajal and all different types of ornamentation. So it appears that they are enjoying, that they are looking so beautiful. But they never for even one second, not one microsecond, they don't think how they are going to enjoy. They only think how Krishna is going to be so happy by seeing them. So the gopis dress themselves as beautifully as possible just to make Krishna happy by seeing them. They have no ulterior desire. They dedicated their bodies and everything that they possessed to the service of Sri Krishna, taking it for granted 
that their bodies were meant for his enjoyment. And they dressed themselves with the understanding that Krishna would be happy by seeing and by touching them. That this is their whole life, this is their whole existence, is always presenting themselves for Krishna's enjoyment. So the gopis think, now, as they're doing this decorating, now we're, we are invited by Kaviraj Goswami to enter within the minds of the gopis what they're actually thinking while they're doing this activity. Here's what they think. E deha koilun ami krishne samarpan tar dhana tar iha sambhog sadam. The gopis think that uh, krishne samarpan I have offered, I have offered this body to Krishna. E deha koilun ami krishne samarpan I have offered this body to Krishna. And tar dhana tar iha sambhog sadam. He is its owner. We all think that we own this body. No. The gopis think that Krishna is the owner of their bodies. And that sambhog sadhan. It brings the enjoyment of Krishna. So that's all the gopis think about. They think, E deho darshan sparse Krishna santoshana, E lagi kore deher marjan bhushana. Krishna, he finds so much joy in seeing and in touching this body. Krishna finds joy. And it is for this reason that they cleanse and they decorate their bodies for Krishna. And now he's, here's a verse spoken by Lord Krishna in the Adi Purana. Uh, Krishna is saying, Nijangam api ya gopyo mameti samupasate tabhya param name parta nigudha prema vajam who is Krishna speaking to? Parta means Arjuna in the Adi Purana. And here he says, O Arjuna, there are no greater receptacles of deep love for me than the gopis. There is no other greater receptacles of deep love for me other than the gopis. And who cleanse? They, what do they do? The gopis cleanse and decorate their bodies because they consider them their bodies to be mine. You see. So, and there is another wonderful feature of the emotion of the gopis. Ar ek adbuta gopi bhaver swabhav. Gopi bhaver swabhav. Their nature. Their uh, swabhav. Uh, there is another adbuta gopi bhavir swabhav. Very, very amazing and wonderful feature of the emotion of the gopis. And that very feature, uh, its power of that feature is beyond the comprehension of the intelligence. No one can even conceive of how powerful this Gopir Svabhav, the Bhavir Svabhav. So, when the Gopis see Lord Krishna, here it is, here is the amazing feature of their Svabhav, the emotions of the Gopis. Gopi Gana Kare Jahe Krishna Darshan. When the Gopis see Lord Krishna, what happens to the gopis? Sukha vansha nahi, sukha hoi koti gun. Huh? They derive unbounded bliss. When the gopis see Krishna, the gopis derive unbounded bliss from seeing him. But 
yet, and here's the most powerful and amazing thing, Sukhavanchanahi, Sukhahoi Kotigun. Oh, they have no desire for this pleasure, but yet there's Kotigun, unbounded bliss, millions, millions and millions of times bliss that they experience. This is beyond the power and comprehension of our intelligence. This is what Kaviraj Goswami is saying. This wonderful feature, this wonderful emotion of the gopis, it is beyond the power of comprehension of the intelligence. Why? Because even though they have no desire for pleasure upon seeing Krishna, but they derive unbounded bliss. Isn't that a, like almost a contradiction? They have no desire to become immersed in bliss. No. But yet they become immersed in unbounded bliss. Yeah. And now how much bliss? How much? Here he's giving a figure. Gopika darshane krishna jayananda hoy taha hoy te kotigun gopi asvadai The gopis taste a pleasure ten million times greater than the pleasure Lord Krishna derives from seeing them. We've heard this before in this chapter. But now it's being again, yet again, asserted. Prabhupada says the wonderful characteristics of the gopis are beyond imagination. They have no desire for their personal satisfaction. But yet, when Krishna is happy by seeing them, then that happiness of Krishna makes the gopis a million times more happy than Krishna himself. Krishna's happiness makes the gopis ten million times more happy. When the gopis see that Krishna is happy, then they experience ten million times more happiness than what Krishna is feeling. We have to get this correctly. This is the Siddhanta. This is the Siddhanta. Okay? This is not just some exaggeration by some completely insane person. No. This is the Siddhanta. This is Gopi Bhav. This is the truth of the Gopis. So. The gopis have no inclination, no inclination at all for their own enjoyment, but yet their joy increases. That is indeed a contradiction. Tasabar nahi nicha sukha anu rod, tatapi vadaye sukha padi lavi rod. Their joy increases. Apparent contradiction, they have no inclination for their own enjoyment at all, and yet their joy increases. This is the spiritual world. This is what we're going to have to understand. Here in the material world, everyone is acting for what? Everyone is performing their daily activities for what? For their own happiness, ultimately. Oh, yes, the man, he may be going, working hard at his job because of his love for his family and so forth. But actually that's extended selfishness. It's selfish. The gopis don't have any of that. They've given up their families. They have no attraction, no attachment at all to their family members. So now, there's a solution to this contradiction. You know? Kaviraj Goswami, he's going to now suggest that he has a solution to this contradiction. This is a contradiction. What's a contradiction? The gopis have no desire for their own enjoyment, but yet they experience millions of times more enjoyment than Krishna does. So he says, for this virodha, virod means contradiction. Ek matra deki samadhan, there is one solution. Only one. Gopikar Sukha, Krishna Sukhi, Arya Vasan. That this contradiction 
as a solution, and the solution is that the joy of the gopis lies in the joy of their beloved Krishna. That's the solution. That's the solution. Now, the situation of the gopis is perplexing. Because although they do not want personal happiness, it was imposed upon them. How would you like to have happiness imposed upon you? Well, gopis don't like that. They don't want that. But we do. Yes. We'll pay people to impose happiness upon us. <laughs> so, the situation of the gopis is perplexing. For although they did not, they did not want happiness, but it was imposed upon them. And the solution to this perplexity is that Sri Krishna's sense of happiness, Sri Krishna's sense of happiness, is limited by the happiness of the gopis. Krishna's sense of happiness is limited by the happiness of the gopis. The devotees at Vrindavan, therefore. They try to serve the gopis, namely Radharani and her associates. If one gains the favor of the gopis, he easily gains the favor of Krishna. Because, on the recommendation of the gopis, Krishna at once accepts the service of a devotee. So that's our hope. That's our only hope. There's no other hope is that one day some gopi will take pity upon us yes. and they'll recommend us but we'll, we will have to perform it's not like we're just going to do nothing and expect that that's going to happen no, no, no we have to do hard work hard labor more than the rickshaw wala we were talking the other day about the rickshaw wallas that used to be there in Calcutta. I don't know if they still have them. They still have them. Even after 200, 300 years. These rickshaw wallas, they're carrying the rickshaw, pulling it with their bare feet on the pavement. And they're doing it all day long. They're lifting up the rickshaw with the people sitting on the rickshaw. Like as if they're a donkey, or as if they're, you know, a mule, or as if they're a horse or something. Huh? A human being acting in that way. But this is quite hard labor. And we look at that, oh my God, I couldn't do that. But are we going to have to do not only equivalent to that, but even surpassing that? Yes or no? I haven't given my, I haven't phrased my question in such a way that you can guess the answer. I'm just leaving it up to you. Because I'm just, I just came up with this example of somebody that works hard like an ass all day long. And I'm trying to say that it's not going to be easy for us to attract the attention of a gopi who's going to say yes. Now we should recommend this, this gopi to Radharani. Right? Is that going to be easy? Are we just, just going to do our little vaidhi sadhana, chant our 16 rounds, follow the four regs, and then automatically we're going to attract? No. No, no, no. No, 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 no. So much more! Does it mean only physical labor? Does it mean only physical? That you can do the equivalent amount of physical labor? Because you lift weights and you've got yourself in shape and all? No, no, no. It means every ounce of the gross and subtle energies that you have in your body will be fully, fully dedicated and sacrificed for Krishna. And when that is done, for this whole life, next life, however many lifetimes it's going to take, then we will attract the mercy and the attention. 
It's not going to happen without that. We like to believe that it is. Yeah? There's a whole huge institution that believes that without that, you're going to go back home, back to Godhead. Yes. You're going to go straight there when you leave your body. Because you chanted 16 rounds and you followed the four regs. So you're going straight to Goloka Vrindavan. But what, what's going to happen if you arrive there and you don't have brain? <laughs> They're going to say, turn around, go back. This is a dichotomy. But yet, it's been encouraged for the neophytes to think like that. Encouragement has been given by the Acharyas just to start us on the pathway. Yes. But we don't realize that we are being roped in <laughs> to something much more than we expect. But yet we will be given a lot of leeway as we go on that pathway. Leeway is there. But the leeway will become way less. So leeway way less yes, as we advance and as we develop taste and attraction. <clears throat> this process is the function of the Ladini Shakti potency. Uh, so this process, even Shraddha is the last fraction of frame. So we're already in the realm of frame within this world which is partial, not full. But we're already in that realm. But to get to that level, we will have to give up everything. Everything. Yes. So, welcome to the pathway of the ultimate renunciation of the gopis. Ultimate. So I'm just finishing what Prabhupada says here. And then we're finishing this class today. The situation of the gopis is perplexing. We already read that. So, the solution to this perplexity is that Sri Krishna's sense of happiness is limited by the happiness of the gopis. Devotees at Vrindavan, therefore, they try to serve the gopis, namely Radharani and her associates. And if one gains the favor of the gopis, he easily gains the favor of Krishna because on the recommendation of the gopis, Krishna at once accepts the service of a devotee. Lord Chaitanya therefore wanted to please the gopis instead of pleasing Krishna. But his contemporaries, they misunderstood him. And for this reason, Lord Chaitanya renounced the order of householder life and became a sannyasi. Do you remember the incident when Mahaprabhu was becoming more and more overwhelmed? And he was still teaching his students. But then what did he start chanting? Gopi, 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 Gopi. And now some of them, they wanted to reject. What is this? He's gone mad. He, my Pandit, has gone mad. You see. But anyway, that was the external cause. There's so many external causes, but the internal causes, that's what we're studying in this chapter. So we'll continue. We're leaving off here on text 189. Yes, 189. And we're really going to go deeper and deeper and deeper until the end of this chapter, around 270-something. So Gaur Prima Hi. Shri Chaitanya Charitam Ritam Ki Jai Shri Krishna Das Kaviran Prasun Pada Ki Jai Jai Shri Sachinandana Gaura Vari Ki Jai Shri Nityananda Mahajan Ki Jai Shri Panchatatva Ki Jai Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Nita Ai Gaura
press never delete. Someone already recorded that? That's a that's an audio recording? No, it's right and reading. I was just started reading yeah. yesterday. Right. The curve boards are they exactly two of Aki Sedantas or is it edited? Because, it's, because it seems seems much simpler than his writing. When I'm reading the curve boards, it's almost like you're reading our Sheila Prabhupada. Because the English is, it's like, you know, I've read his words before and they're like, he's in a dictionary. It depends on the translator that doesn't Because this is very, the English is just flow, it's just simple. So that's my question. Well, this, yeah, Bhakti Sananda says, of course, English writing isn't how we write in English, but the sentence is only body makes Like, yeah, but this is his purport. I'm saying his purports that I'm reading, they're very, like, it, like flows without, you know, so I'm asking, are these purports edited, or are they exactly? I think it's pretty good. I mean, I did find one mistake when I read when I read the like sketch of the Kamadas, and where I found a mistake in the translation. But generally, who we have to go is a good translator. Mm -hmm. It just flows. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, I'll tell you something. I had a similar, a similar thought many, many years before. Because what we see in his English, you know, that, that it's different. But it depends on what he's commenting on. For example, first of all, Bhakti Siddhanti, but that's not his that's not his writing. That's Bhakti Vinotakur's writing, and then it's translated by uh, what's his name? Obiel Kapoor. Nishikanta Sanyal. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and it's it's somewhat similar to the Oxford kind of English of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Okay, you know that's what we've been exposed to. Then there's also English conversations that Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta had with various individuals. Those those are printed by Gaudiya Mat, right? Various books. I've seen them. Okay, so he's not going to be using that kind of English in his spoken English, right? But what I've noticed, now I can't say, like for example, Chandra or Madhukar, you could, you could read the Bengali and then you can read the, the English translation of the Bengali by Bhumipati, because that's, I don't know if it, that's his methodology that he's just doing a straight translation from the Bengali of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, or if he's also um, referencing some other, that there might have been some other translation of it, or attempt to, to translate it into English. Yeah. I don't know of anything else. Huh? I don't know of, of the Bodhi of Pasha, like yeah. I don't know of any other translation. Of that. I, don't I don't think so. I think this is just flows. This is like reading our shield. And also, I mean, his commentary, yeah. his Bengali, like the commentary isn't that difficult to read. It's not like impossible you to see? read. Really His Bengali commentary is yeah. not so difficult to read. I think there's also another factor. Like you could render a translation into difficult English, or you could render it into simple English. They turned it around. It's not yeah. necessary. Yeah. Because, gonna, yes. But because you of the light, it is dark. Because they were doing it. Uh, they just decided that they were going to do it. So they actually. Yeah. 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 Yeah